Underneath the canopy of a star-studded night, where silhouettes drizzle in the seductive glow of a lavish moon, there manifests a beguiling figure of hypnotic allure. The creature is a succubus, her advent a dance of shadows that laces the tranquility of the night with a dangerous allure. Her eyes, lit with the fury of inferno, catch the gleam of the stars, blazing with an intensity that reaches into the deepest corners of your desires, tempting, beckoning. Steeped in the sultry scent of the night, she moves with an ethereal grace that belies her leviathan strength. Her raven tresses whip in the night wind like undulating obsidian serpents. Her presence, an arcane melody that resonates around you, weaving a web of pure carnal desire with threads spun from unworldly dreams. Despite her beauty, a darker truth lies beneath the delicate facade. The undeniable appeal that seizes your senses masks the serrated edges of a perilous precipice. To summon a succubus is to dance along the brink of this abyss, where pleasure and pain intermingle, and each step could send you spiralling into the ceaseless unknown. Call upon a succubus, and you invite a voracious entity into your realm. She will breathe life into your deepest fantasies, yes, but at a price. A price paid with the currency of your life force, your peace, your hold on reality. Her touch, rapturous as it may be, drains more than just strength. It diminishes the soul, nibbles away at sanity, eclipses the light of your essence with her engulfing darkness. The succubus's grasp is seductive but toxic, her allure tantalizing yet treacherous. Now, the question that dancing on the tip of your curiosity, can one summon a succubus without paying this dear price? In this direct journey into the heart of mystic allure and existential danger, we dare to explore the unimaginable. We will explore the intricate latticework of legends and truths, braving the perilous causeway that stretches between the realm of the succubus and ours. Together we'll deviate from the norm and delve into the taboo, unraveling the secrets veiled in the twilight of the unknown. We shall lift the veil from the succubus, the enchantress of the shadows, her lore, her dangers, and most importantly, the forbidden art of her invocation. Steal yourself, for we embark on a path where every line is danced in shadow, every whisper churns the air with mystery. Yet I encourage you, dare to step with me onto this journey into our world's eerily beautiful underbelly, filled with things unseen, untold, and unimaginably dangerous. Understanding the world of the succubi, their lure, their peril, demands a journey. A voyage that traverses past the tactile reality of the present, through the foggy channels of antiquity, and unearths the archaic truths embedded in the layers of time. The depth of such chasms is necessary to fathom before one dares to engage with these ethereal yet dangerous entities. Come, let us now unveil the gilded shroud that cloaks the history of the succubi, revealing their intricate, labyrinthine past. The succubi draw their roots from a time when the line between dreams and reality was thin, a period steeped in the supernatural's mystique. Their origins, veiled in myths and old world lore, whisper tales of beguiling beauty entangled with unspeakable danger. Eons ago when darkness fell, these nocturnal spirits emerged from the shadows to coil around the hearts and minds of those who least suspected. The term succubus itself is a Latin construct from the late 14th century. It stems from succuba, translating to paramour. The essence lies in the words sub, meaning under, and cubare, which indicates to lie. So metaphorically, the succubus is the horrifying phantom that lays under you as you sleep, engaging sleeping mortals in intimate encounters and lingering on the edges of consciousness. We trace one of the oldest and most keynote mentions back to the Hebrew texts where Lilith, the foremother of all succubi, presides. Legend paints Lilith as Adam's first consort, preceding Eve. She was a woman who dared to stand against divine patriarchy and claimed equality with Adam, a defiance that led to her banishment from Eden's paradise. An outcast, Lilith metamorphosed into a creature of the night. She gave birth to countless offspring with the infamous Angel of Death, Samael, hence sowing the seeds for the succubus's lineage. Concrete parallels find succubi across different cultures, stretching their tails across various eras and geographies. The deserts of the Arabian heartland birthed the succubi's mystical counterparts, the Karina. These entities, simultaneously born with every human, are invisible, yet potent. Unless appropriately subdued, they worm their way into a person's dreams, inducing passionate impulses and disorder. Nudging further westwards, and landing on the fertile narratives of French mythology, the succubi are cast as nightmarish demons. These entities latched onto slumbering men, 
meshing reality and dreams into a single seductive tapestry. Their sinister objective was to birth demonic half-humans, leaving men drained beyond salvation. Present across the pages of various ethnic folklore, the succubi have embodied the same symbolic representation, dangerous, enchantingly perilous beings intruding into the dreams of unsuspecting mortals. Despite their different portrayals across cultures, their essence remains consistent, a succubus, a malevolent enchantress of the night who stirs unspoken desires and stealthily absorbs the life force of men. The likenesses of these ethereal beings are woven with the same thread, a silhouette interspersed with danger and captivating fright, a dance etched into the annals of time itself. Journeying through this convoluted history, we glimpse the succubi's time-worn tapestry, witnessing their transformation over the eons, yet their fundamental lure and inherent danger has remained the same. This understanding is crucial when approaching the topic of summoning succubi, for one must be well-versed with the entirety of the tale before choosing to engage in the dance with these not-so-harmless entities. With this foundation laid, we can begin to explore the perils and potential of calling upon these midnight apparitions. When one eyes the edge of the seductive abyss that is the succubus, it is necessary to understand the profound risks that line such a precipice. The desire, potent and titillating as it may be, hides a devastating truth. Love between humans is exchange, a delightful intermingling of energies, shared life force. The dance with a succubus, however, is a one-sided drain of energy, a game of predator and prey, where the predator is a master huntress and the prey, a blinded human drawn to dazzle of the huntress's sensual flame. The succubus operates in realms unseen by our mortal eyes, visiting her prey in their sleep, in their dreams, stealing within their unguarded psyche. She channels quintessential feminine energy to draw the vitality from the unsuspecting human, invading their unconscious escape, marking their souls, leaving spectral scars. The mystery of nocturnal emissions can, in many folklores, be traced to the handiwork of succubi. These passionate dreams and nocturnal discharges are veiled encounters with these beings, elusive but profound intimate emissions spun from otherworldly interactions. Wielded precisely, the succubus's predatory capability has intricate and turbocharged dimensions. This comes into the direct line of sight when you consider her counterpart, the incubus, as dangerous as the succubus, but driven by contrasting objectives. When the male force, his vitality, gathered by the succubi, becomes plentiful, it is passed to the incubus. He, in turn, lays with unsuspecting women potentially sowing the seed, creating paranormal hybrids in the tangible world. The risk of such exchange is daunting, a dreadful cycle that leeches life force from males, exploits females, and pollutes human lineage with their demonic bloodline. Behind the veil of enticing physical pleasure lies a corridor of psychological distress. A union with a succubus could warp one's perception of reality, initiating a frantic tumble down the rabbit hole. The once familiar world pivots, transforming into a labyrinth of shadows, echoes, and paranoia. After the dreamy encounter, souls are left hollow, their minds resembling a desolate landscape, haunted by the memory of their spectral mistress. Furthermore, the constant feeling of violation, the gnawing reality of your intimate space's disturbance, unravel one's sanity slowly, as if teased by invisible spectral claws. Physically, the one entranced by the succubus pits their body against an array of elusive ailments. An inexplicable exhaustion daunts the prey, making the body feel older, heavier, and separating the soul from the joy of living. Fluctuating temperatures, lingering lethargy, and the slow ebbs of vitality become dreaded regularities. Their once vigorous existence diminishes into mere shadows, echoing the devastating aftermath of the succubus's visitations. Treading the path to gratifying the flesh by summoning a succubus is like playing with unseen fire. You might not see the flame, but the burns are deep, perpetual and real. The dance with her, though it promises intoxicating fervor, is an unsustainable ballet of danger, reducing the dance life to vestiges and its spirit to echoing silence. The succubus, though draped in a lure, is a silent siren, her song a melody of deceit, her dance, a pantomime of peril. While the notes of carnal desire might be tempting, remember that these spectral enchantresses are not spawned from divine love but demonic deception. Prolonged interactions are not mere dalliances, they are merciless psychic incursions, bearing a considerable toll on the body, spirit and psyche. Today's fleeting fascination could become tomorrow's eternal chain, heavy, cold and painstakingly real. Imagine standing at the edge of a tempest, 
the waves of uncertainty crashing relentlessly against the shores of your conscious mind. Your world, once a haven of serenity, now reverberates with the echoes of a spectral seductress, a succubus, whose allure has kept you entranced in a dance of perilous seduction. The pleasure has faded, leaving in its wake an ominous dread that coils around your being, tighter with each phase of the moon. Your desire now is of different cadence, to break free, to reclaim your peace, to banish this beguiling enchantress. To achieve this odyssey of liberation, you must embark on an intricate journey, stepping delicately through the veiled domains of ancient lore and hidden rituals, the shadows of danger looming with every stride. Start by cleansing your dwelling, the tangible fortress of your existence. As the twilight descends, catch the pungent scent of sage drifting languidly in the air. Let it purge the remnants of her spectral whispers from your habitat. The smoky tendrils weave through every nook, every cranny, creating a lattice of purifying energy against her. The ritual continues by plucking cords within the realm of your perception. Holding in your hands the sacred amethyst crystal, feel its cold, smooth structure humming with quiet strength against your skin. Watch as it absorbs negativity, as it shields your aura, its shaded glimmers reflecting the spectral battles waged with the enchantress of the nightmares. Such spectres never confine their presence to the tangible alone. Her spectral whispers seep into the sanctum of your mind, tinging your thoughts with ghostly echoes of her being. To clear your psyche demands a journey inward to the hidden depths of your soul. Saturate your spirit into the sacred stream of conscious meditation. Allow your mind to navigate the labyrinth, following the thread of inner light to the epicenter of your being, illuminating the shadows she casts. Walking deeper into this spectral jungle, arm yourself with words of power, incantations woven from ancient times. These are more than mere clusters of syllables. They are potent implements of spectral warfare, each resonating with the power to recede her influence. Utter them aloud, with conviction heavy in your voice. Each word crashes against her, each sentence a hostile command for retreat. Next, trace an intricate sigil in your sanctuary, the manifestation of your focused will. The sigil is your silent sentinel. Drawn from your concentrated intent, it mirrors your desire for release, becoming a tangible manifestation of your command. Its interlacing lines entwine to form an emblem of freedom, its image a silent chant that tells the succubus her time within your realm has expired. As you delve further into the labyrinth of banishment, one must note, the process is a dance on the knife edge between two worlds. A momentary faltering conviction, a misstep in the awakening, could fasten her chains tighter than before. Yet know that a successful banishment doesn't mark the end. Remember, the succubus is cunning, a spectral huntress who may seek other crevices in your defense, slipping right back into the kaleidoscope of your life. This path you have chosen is a journey through the looking glass, where the air pulsates with unseen energies, and every step is drenched in spectral lore. Fear not, for you are more than a mere traveler. As the age-old axiom unfolds, as above, so below, realize that your strength is immeasurable. You stand defiant in the eye of the tempest, armed with illuminating knowledge and an unwavering spirit. Within you surges the power to not merely weather the tempest, but to rise above it and chart your way to sanctuary and peace. Long ago, in the heart of the Egyptian desert, lived a wealthy man who renounced all worldly treasures to dedicate his life to God. This man, Anthony the Great, famously known as Saint Anthony, led a life of harsh asceticism and fervent devotion. Shrouded in flames of temptation and spectral seduction, his tale transcends the eons, echoing as a cautionary saga of the invisible warfare against the succubi. Abandoning his possessions, Saint Anthony retreated to a solitary tomb, yet far from the bustle of civilization, he discovered he wasn't alone. In the metallic silence of the desert night, he began to feel an unsettling presence infiltrate his dreams. It was during one of these uneasy visions that he met the insidious seductresses of the night, the succubi. They visited his dreamscape as ethereal forms, their beauty a sacrilegious mirage under the velvet starlight. Their crimson lips whispered promises of unspoken pleasure, their luminous bodies coiled around his spirit in a dance of sinful temptation. Despite his cloistered existence and spirited devotion, St. Anthony found himself ensnared in a spectral battle of desires, the succubi amplifying his latent impulses sinking their enchanting claws deeper into his psyche. Yet even amidst the clutches of these alluring entities, St. Anthony's faith remained unbroken. 
Each night he found himself entangled in their web of seduction, their whispers seeping into his thoughts, their visages haunting his slumber. But with every dawn he fought back with an indomitable spirit, a resistance ignited by the flame of his faith. One of the most captivating accounts of the saints' trials with these nocturnal seductresses is portrayed in the eponymous painting The Temptation of St. Anthony by Matthias Grunewald. The imagery brings the saints' ethereal encounters to life, showcasing him amidst a myriad of demonic forms caught in a whirlwind of bewildering temptation. Despite the overwhelming surge of sensual pleasure that the succubi orchestrated, St. Anthony chose the path of communion with his faith over the carnal union with the entities. He stood steadfast on the bridge between temptation and devotion, not yielding to the invisible pleasures of the succubi, but persevering with his divine penance. His saga narrates the tale of a man at odds with his fiery desires, battling the coquetry of the knight's enchantress. His unbroken spirit and unwavering devotion transformed him into an unassailable fortress, an embodiment of spiritual strength. St. Anthony's tale serves as a poignant reminder. It resonates with the timeless truth that the succubus, while enticing with her illusion of pleasure, is a dream weaver of spiritual destitution. It showcases the potential for a human soul's triumph over spectral seduction when fueled by unwavering faith, a theme as ensnaring as it is cautionary. Let his story linger as you contemplate interacting with these beings, for sometimes the allure of the succubus is but a deceptive siren's call leading to a perilous descent. Many moons ago, in the misty veil separating reality and legend, there exists an enchanting tale intertwined with intrigue and otherworldly seduction. This saga takes us back to the mystical lands of ancient Persia. This ancient land, steeped in a vibrant tapestry of cultural amalgamations, bore witness to the alluring tale of Lilith, a beguiling entity whose name became synonymous with midnight seduction. In this woven tapestry of legend and lore, Lilith was the first woman, a companion created for Adam. Her creation was distinct from Eve's, she was born from the same dust that formed Adam, a mark of equality rather than subordination. However, the celestial tranquility of paradise soon gave way to unruly storms. Lilith, imbued with a strong spirit and an indomitable will, refused to submit to Adam's perceived authority. This defiance marked the dawn of her metamorphosis. Her obstinacy displeased the sacred divine. Thus, she was banished from the paradise, sentenced to roam the shadows outside Eden's gates. In the spectral solitude outside Eden, Lilith's transformation took a darker turn. Transmogrifying into a spectral seductress, a succubus, she emerged from the ashes of rejection with renewed vigor and insidious intent. She haunted the dreams of men, her whispers seeping into their slumbers, weaving carnal fantasies and drawing out their deepest desires. Far from Eden's confines, she turned men into hapless victims of her spectral seductions, their energies feeding her ever-growing power. In her spectral form, Lilith was not content with merely traversing into dreams. She crept into the earthly realm, giving birth to a lineage of succubi, each bearing a fragment of her undying charm and sinister intent. These spectral daughters continued their mother's legacy, entwining themselves with the Nocturne, engaging in the same dance of enchantment and energy extraction that had been Lilith's design. Through these spectral seductresses, Lilith's legend etched itself into mortal folklore, a tale of a woman's defiance that transformed into an eternal dance of spectral seduction. Lilith's spectral saga, therefore, serves as a cautionary tale, a chilling reminder of the unseen cost that lies beneath the guise of nocturnal pleasures. Whether it be in Persia, in a distant corner of the world, or even in the hidden corners of your consciousness, Lilith's tale endures, waiting to be recounted, narrated, whispered under the cold glare of a moonlit sky. Let us draw back the shadow-laden veils of time and traverse into the ancient domain of King Solomon. Known far and wide across countless cultures, his name resonates with echoes of infinite wisdom and intricate understanding of realms both seen and unseen. His tale spirals from the heart of Jerusalem, where the grand edifice of the first temple stretched its roots deep into the weft and warp of reality, threading the mundane with the mystical. King Solomon was not merely a monarch. He was an enigma wreathed in tales of kingly duties and spectral alliances. His spectral saga whispers of a dominion that straddles the brink of the physical world and the ethereal, teetering on the edge between mortality and the spectral ebbs of existence. In the splendid court of his reign, 
The tangible bled into the intangible, as the king presided over a kingdom not only composed of flesh and blood, but also spun from shadows and whispering spirits. In the twirling dance of spectral existence, the realm of succubi swirled with a foreboding allure. These spectral sirens moved in the realm of dreams, their ethereal bodies composed of a tangle of carnal desires and midnight fantasies. Each succubus was an intoxicating allure in this spectral chorus, seducing their victims through enticing mirages of intense sensual pleasure, unfurling within the silken veils of a dreamer's unconscious mind. King Solomon, however, was a beacon of wisdom that cut through this enveloping fog of seduction. His armor was his unparalleled sagacity that reached into the spectral realm, while his scepter of command was the seal of Solomon. Imprinted with divine symbols, this seal, as legends whisper, was more than a mere accessory. It was an ethereal fortress, a spiritual force field that granted Solomon an unusual dominion over beings of the spectral dimensions, binding and controlling them, even the elusive succubi. Through his encounters with these nocturnal temptresses, King Solomon showcased the duality of his reign. A figure who wielded an earthly legacy of building a majestic realm and an ethereal saga spun from commanding the world of succubi, a realm that plumbed the deepest fathoms of sensual seduction. His dance with the succubi was a symphony of wisdom and willpower against the backdrop of enchantment and carnal desire. By overpowering their otherworldly allure and binding them using his divine seal, Solomon etched a tale of triumph over spectral seduction in the Chronicles of Eternity. Yet, cradled within the heart of this tale, there lies an invaluable truth, that power over such entities is born not merely of courage but from the light of wisdom and self-conviction that outshines the beguiling charisma of the succubi. It's a journey into the labyrinth of the soul, illumined by the flame of understanding, where one must encounter and conquer the spectral machinations of seduction. The tale of King Solomon and the succubi unfurls like a timeless scroll, painting a panoramic canvas of cautionary enthrallment, of the spectral realm's complexities, and of the radiant beacon that wisdom promises amidst the murky abyss of the unknown. The echoes of this tale, dear traveller, remain as a testament to the power of wisdom, resonating through the shifting sands of time. It serves as a navigation star, guiding those who dare to embark on a journey through the spectral domains that lie mysteriously beyond the mortal veil. In the labyrinth of mysticism, as you stand at the precipice of the unknown, the spectral beckoning of the succubi might enthrall your spirit. If bewitching whispers from the canvas of the midnight seductresses beckon you, remember, this dance requires more than reckless curiosity. It demands a rhythm that resonates with the spectral orchestra of the unseen. Summoning, dear seeker, is not purely an act. It's an enchanting waltz that echoes in the chambers of your soul, a spiralling dance that navigates the gossamer veils separating our world from the mysteries that lie hidden in shadow-kissed corners. It is a portal that loops our terrestrial sphere with the transcendent enigmas of the spectral realm. A journey like this must begin with the right alignment. As a celestial conductor preparing for an ethereal symphony, you must first fine-tune your spirit, delve deep into the labyrinth of your consciousness, unravel your fears, your desires, your strengths. A willing heart combined with a resolute mind forms the initial step. It is this alignment that will light your torch as you inch towards the spectral ballet of succubi. The stage of your encounter is equally paramount, an arena which echoes the spectral symphony, serene yet pulsating with unseen dynamics. This could be a room bathed in the faint silver glow of the moonlight, a sacred glen carpeted with nature's majesty, or a secluded alcove of a library, brimming with centuries-old wisdom. The place must be an extension of your spirit, a sacrosanct sanctum where you are at peace, removed from the prying eyes of the unwary. In fulfilling the elements for your encounter, enchantment lies cloaked within restraint. Veer away from the intricate rituals painted in texts and adopt a minimalist tenor. The ambience requires nothing more than aromatic tendrils of lingering incense entwined with the faint glow of a solitary candle, a beacon in the embrace of the unseen. If your spirit leans towards it, you could cradle a crystal that hums to your intentions or a personal talisman, a spectral anchor in your enchanting voyage. But above the material lies the essence, your intention, an intangible yet potent force. Remember, you don't command a succubus. Instead, you issue an invitation to an ethereal dance. It's a harmonious interlude, an intricate rhythm where dominion holds no ground. Instead, respect and humility pirouette with the haunting notes of the spectral ballet. Keep in mind, dear seeker, this is not a voyage for the faint of heart. 
The lure of succubi can often marinate in turmoil as much as it could bask in fascination. Tread wisely, cloak yourself in prudence, and remember, the call of the succubi isn't just an echo from beyond the veil. It's also a reflection of your soul's deepest desires braided with unspoken fears, revealing a tantalizing yet treacherous waltz of ethereal desires. The sinew of your wisdom lies in how gracefully you navigate through each note of this spectral symphony, without losing yourself in the embrace of the unseen. In the theater of moonlit splendor, where clandestine desires merge with ageless enchantments, your ritual is unfurled. Adorn yourself in an aura where tranquility and anticipation blend, for these unseen encounters are resonances, not commands. Remember, respect illuminates the undulating journey to call upon a succubus. Nestle yourself within your chosen space, giving it life with your presence. Awash in the ethereal hymns of the cosmos, root yourself in the rich tapestry of Earth, feeling the subtle rhythm of energies swirling around. Your focus should be transfixed on the languid hypnotism of your candle's flame. This solitary light becomes your guiding star amidst the languid caress of shadows. Let the warming glow, the mesmerizing dance of the fire, and the soft crackle of its song permeate your senses. It's within this elemental enthrallment that your intentions take form, awakening, becoming the fervent heartbeat of the unseen. With your sanctuary prepared, the true allure of the ritual manifests. Close your eyes, plunge into the mystic darkness. This becomes your stage. Release the constraints of the ordinary world. Let the whispers of the unseen begin to echo within you. Then it is time to weave your incantation, not with mortal words, but with the size of your spirit and the brushstrokes of your desire. Envision your spectral seductress, the sultry Isolde, her ethereal allure manifesting on your inner canvas. Let each detail etch itself across your mind, the flow of her raven hair caressing the spectral wind, the beguiling brightness of her eyes, the intoxicating curve of her form. Whisper her name like the sweetest of secrets, a sensuous sigh reverberating in the silent depths of the night. Immerse yourself fully in this vivid fantasy. What is Isolde's song? Is it the quiet calm of the midnight moon or a melody rising from the heart of forgotten realms? Can you taste her enchanting essence, a forbidden sweetness seducing your senses, weaving you deeper into the threads of her allure? Can you feel her contact, an enticing shiver electrifying your soul like a bolt of lightning? Whisper now to the night, Isolde, sensuous enchantress of the unseen realm. I seek your enigmatic opulence. By the glow of Venus, by the glimmer of the silver moon, I offer you the whispers of my desire, the admiration in my voice, the yearning in my gaze. Together, let us tread the hallowed grounds of shared mystery, awaken the echoes of archaic lore and embrace the intertwining of our energies. Isolde, cordially, I beseech thy presence in this mortal sphere. Summoning is not a rigid ritual, it's a winding road, taking you deeper into the heart of your own desire, a shared space of ethereal passion and alluring anticipation. As shared energies culminate and the cosmic forces align, you will hear her first whisper, the softest chiming in the bell tower of your mind. In the symphony of this ethereal encounter, the summoning does not conclude at conjuration. It's an intimate tete-a-tete -tete that limbs the border of carnal fascination and untamed fear, leading you towards the labyrinthine riddles of the unseen. Uncover, dear seeker, the intoxicating allure that exists between the pages of the ordinary and the spectral, as your spirit becomes a humming beacon for the enticing Isolde. Upon the last echoes of your summoning, find yourself immersed in an ethereal haze where reality and desire merge into a captivating waltz of sensations and emotions. The immediate aftermath is not cold silence, but an electric charge illuminating the edges of your perception, a raw, vivid hum from beyond the veil of reality. It's the bewitching cradle of the post-summoning, a realm steeped in alluring ecstasies. The succubus announces her presence not in front of your worldly sight, but within the shadowed moors of your consciousness. She personifies the harmonious tension between yearning and restraint, her spectral touch and otherworldly murmur against your maddened senses. A tingling anticipation seizes your heart, twin flames of primal desire and ethereal intrigue igniting an irresistible pull. The exchange with the succubus is a carnal revelation, an interplay of light and shadow. Her influence wreathes around your dreams, a hypnotic undercurrent that adds searing hues to the mundane, catalyzing forgotten autumnal desires into an incandescent spring. Heightened emotions flood your heart, braiding themselves into a hypnotic rhythm, 
a frenzied foxtrot of tantalizing pleasure and quaking trepidation. Euphoria, fear, desire. Each emotion intertwines in a feverish waltz. Every sensation heightens. Every whisper seems louder. An echo of the succubus's unseen caress, tempting your heartstrings into an intoxicating sonata. The canvas of your dreamscape punctuates with vivacious flushes and sighs. Lost within the labyrinth of sensual illusions, you find yourself teetering on the precipice of rapture and fear, wading through a fervent gale of dark enchantments that pulsate in synchrony with the succubus's whispers. The post-summoning reality summons a symphony of heightened senses, a feverish waltz that traverses between reality and fantasy. It is imperative, however, to maintain a semblance of control amidst this intoxicating dance. Your invitation was not a promise of submission, but rather a mutual accord of exploration and respect. As you dally with the succubus's allure, be wary of her intoxicating influence, thorough in your understanding of the lurking boundaries. In the incandescent embrace of the succubus, carnal pleasures dance with primal instincts, casting long shadows of intrigue and an irresistible pull of the forbidden. It's an intermingling of delights and mysteries, a delightfully tantalizing sojourn that is as much an introspective journey into your deepest desires as it is a venture into the unseen realm. And at the heart of this serpentine dance lies the succubus, a spectral siren resounding in the rhythmic silence of yearning and satisfaction, inauguration and awakening. In the spellbinding adventure of summoning succubi, we've waltzed through the intoxicating allure of the unseen realm, fraught with untamed desires and shadow-kissed mysteries. Together, we've unveiled the spectral echoes of curiosity and yearning, only to realize that the dance steps of desire should always be traced with the ink of respect and prudence. Wielding the tool of summoning is not merely a madcap pursuit of carnal pleasures, but a solemn whisper of invitation into an ancient world older than time. A poor dancer who stumbles through the dance floor, dear seeker, may find themselves waltzing straight into the jaws of misadventure. So let it be known, summoning succubi isn't a raucous tavern show, but a moonlight ballet that demands the grace of respect and the mastery of wisdom. And remember not to treat these spectres as mere sources of thrilling tales or fickle playthings. They're ancient entities who may have been sauntering through the abyss since time was but a gurgling babe playing with cosmic toys. Disrespect them, and you might just find your dreams into their favourite new haunting ground. And believe me, these spectral seductresses have ways to make your slumber a living nightmare no lullaby can soothe away. So next time curiosity tickles your fancy and you think of inviting a succubus to tea, remember... Prepare with reverence, summon with respect, and always remember to ask how they take their ethereal brew. Oh, and before I flutter away, here's a little snippet for your amusement. Did you hear about the unfortunate fellow who didn't subscribe to Sundusk Sagas? Rumor has it he summoned a succubus who ignored his cries for mercy, insisting that the best form of punishment was to endlessly narrate, on loop, all the adventures he missed out on for not subscribing. Talk about a haunting reminder. So to avoid any spectral ramblings during your midnight slumber, do remember to like, share and subscribe to our enchanting Sundusk Sagas, your pocket guide to the spectral realm. Stay tuned for our next mystical journey. And remember, there's a succubus out there, fluttering on the edges of your dreams, and she knows if you've subscribed or not. Good night, dear seeker, and may wisdom guide you in your dance with the unseen.